students in uh, consulting uh, having worked on major civil infrastructure projects spanning dams, water, uh, roads, ways, uh, roads and bridges, tunnels and hydropower. Uh, he is a graduate from the uh, University of Morocco and uh, Nihal holds a PhD in Structural Engineering, uh, uh, ME in Geotechnical Engineering and MBA in Technology Group Management. Related to uh, dam engineering, Nihal has undertaken more than 600 dam sets to release uh, with individual uh, PR population at risk uh, assessments uh, in excess uh, uh, of 1 million uh, uh, numbers. Then Nihal has also acted as an independent reviewer for the answer to seven individual capex in excess of uh, Sri Lankan total 200 billion. He serves on Australian National Committee of Large Dams Committee on Concrete Drive Dams and Design Against Earthquakes. He also serves on International Society of Soil Mechanics and Foundation Engineering Committee on Geotechnical Risk. Uh, Nihal, even though you are living and working in Australia, you are a uh, volunteer consultant to the Education Department and Resource Person participating in our seminars organized by IESL and other professional bodies. So we now want to focus our today's panel discussion to the current hot topic actually. Walk in tracking character computer, which compelled us to discuss this issue in general. So you have visited many uh, of the resource and reserves uh, on, on, on the US invitation uh, on the Division Department while on holidays in Sri Lanka. So you are the best person to compare the situation in Sri Lanka with the Australian situation uh, where dam safety is being practiced to the highest standard uh, in the world. Uh, with the immense experience and knowledge on dam safety and geotechnical engineering, can you tell us uh, what will be the best approach the dam owner should take uh, uh, for this kind of demand? Thank you. Thanks, Dr. for the generous, um, uh, you know, profile about me. And as you know, it's still close to 11 o'clock at night. Um, Three days ago, Badra rang and said, Nani Nihal, me mail komali kalla din nikira. So I thought I can't refuse what Badra asked. So what I am trying to say is give an engineering background uh, on why uh, we should not just go and disturb the top of an ancient dam. Like with, uh, you know, locals like uh, jog jogging track upstream, downstream, or jogging track for the safety of people is not not none of my business and we can discuss that later uh, if we require but my one is technical now Bhagra asked me to give a background because of course we are great ancient dam builders I left Sri Lanka in 1984 so that that's, things have changed uh, just because other reasons when we build or modify a dam we can't enhance the risk which basically say we can kill people it's, it's not acceptable to kill a person and say, look, I gave you a jogging track or something. Sorry, but jogging track is better than your life. We can't give that message to their children. That's what we have to get into our mind. Now, in most international jurisdictions, retarding basins, I know people say Borla has come on ice and all that, they are classified as dams because if they fail, people downstream can get killed. I will show that in the later slide. So it's when we deal with the dam, especially existing dam, which is the basin what they said breached in 19, during colonial era, we, it's metastable, it's about to be destabilized, like, you know, blink of something else. It's nearly happened in, I heard, 1978. So that's, um, even flood design basins are now uh, built in Colombo. I don't know whether the, even they have a, the dam break and whether people know where when it fails, where we water will go at what velocity, what day. These are current currently uh, you know legislation power like in Australia. If I go and change, for example, uh, this Parakrama Samudra without expert advice, without signing off, looking at that cross section, probably I have been charged by the, um, the prosecutors here. So there's no if I will be charged and probably I will be surrounded by lawyers and probably they are going to take home my house. Simple definition of a dam, you know, earlier used to be 15 meter big, that's it, that's all gone, that's discarded, that is crazy. Now a dam is, if it fails, irrespective of factor of safety, how many people reviewed it, 
signed off direct the general minister is irrelevant if it fails that water will travel fast below city at the day if there are at least one person in an inundation area with the depth of 0.3 meters that's classified as a dam it's not in Australia it's in UK, USA, Finland, Philippines you know I have worked in currently a lot of projects in Philippines that's it no so a small retarded basin can be classified as a dam which attracts a lot of responsibility to the owner if the owner uh, disregards his responsibility he will be charged under criminal law dam is a special structure when it fails behind that water will come one cubic meter of one cubic meter of second water is equal to 40 bags of 20 kilogram cement hitting you at every second that's not very nice it's very painful so it kills people so how do we determine a dam or no dam people have to do a dam rain which is on sunny day like what happened on Nabatale sunny day it breaks we have to see where the water will go and um, how many people will get killed what warning time and other one is what's called flood event like uh, overtopping like Parak Samutri I think 1978 didn't overtop but from the uh, water uh, but it nearly overtop from uh, wave, wave I saw one superintendent telling on the uh, some video yesterday Camp Lakai Lizard back that means it's nearly breached lucky if it uh, it didn't breach if it breached probably it would have killed thousands of people this, we are not talking about Katharina, 1,300 people with what they said in U.S. I was involved in the incident. It, they had plenty of warning time. So that that needs good engineering. It's not he said, she said, or cat's mom said. You know, putting it bluntly, it needs good engineering, and it has to be documented, and, and a copy needs to be have with have a state. Uh, emergency service or I think Sri Lanka it called building research department like some juri jurisdiction it is enshrined in the cabinet because nobody can change it. So law required this assess for every new existing and dam modification. So I don't even Parakma Samudra had such undertaken at all with this modification. Then dam break mapping. This is uh, a small town. I just put 64,000 cubic meters. I don't know how many in gallon. Very small. You can see it's a dam break. The red color is where the water goes. This is around a small road, impounding water. So that should be there. That's that's a must for any modification and any existing dam. So I have traveled a few Giritale, area and some in down south. I couldn't find any of those uh, with the uh, irrigation department or whoever owned them. This is, I just put a bad dam, you know, people see every last few days, everybody is sending me texts and asks if I build this for uh, our so I said, no, I have nothing to do with it. Now, everybody is expert these days, one, because it, they can easily go to Google and cut and paste. So, this is a dam, small dam fail, no filters, very similar to what happened around uh, Kantali. Water came around the pipe, not in the pipe, because poor detailing and it breached in the first uh, spilling. Uh, about eight years after construction. Nothing left after about half an hour. Now this, this cross section, uh, I, I, I apologize to but if it is wrong, somebody sent me and it's very similar to what I saw from my UDA colleague. Now this has problems just by looking at it. And I know Mr. Basilvan said it's an elephant got a rat or mouse on its back. This is probably a bad mouse. If water comes to similar height in 1978, this dam will breach. I'll put some comments behind. I don't know you guys may say, oh, it has been expert. You know, I am no expert. I have seen this. If I do this cross section and put on a, this extreme has a dam, it's about 140 gigaliters. If that fails, probably we are talking about thousands of people getting killed, not, not hundreds like Kantan. So, now I send this one to Badra to get some answers, but if even one is no, I think most will be no, somebody can tell me I am wrong, we got a problem. First before do anything with the dam, Chris, somebody has to go and look at the existing dam. Now, 
Do we know the hazard category of this dam, I, irrigation department? I don't know. If it is extreme, people would not touch it. Just go and bulldoze the uh, uh, riffraff to the reserve and end it up on newspapers. What is the dam retail period? What, at what, not 1978, it's a wave. What, at what return period, water will go to the crest of the dam? It's, if it is extreme, I doubt. Uh, I am fully confident it's extreme. We are looking, talking about probable maximum flood. That means this dam cannot be overtopped. As soon as it's overtopped, it will breach. It's uh, sandy, silty sand. That material is breaching. I have been to give it a as well. Do we have a proper dam? Probably not. Do we have emergency inundation mapping? If you have one, it should be with the police. Probably not. Do we, do we have a comprehensive dam safe review? International law required, uh, USBR everywhere, 10 years. Probably not. Do we know the safety and slope instability? Probably not. Do we have filters in the dam? Definitely not. These are all dams, they don't have there, as I said. In, filter is very important for any dam, even basic, because once you have a filter, you can do what we call blue murders upstream. Do we know the construction history? No, probably, you know, kings probably made records, but they got lost. Do we know the soil types and erosion potential? Probably not, but it is highly erosive. We have seen this one. Do we have instrumentation, except pito research in the dam? My take is no. So when they have no, if somebody asks me, Nihal, will you modify this dam, Christ? I say, if I were you, I would never touch it. Without thorough studies and signed off by relevant experts. You don't pick up experts just because he or she is your friend. It's a panel. I am sitting on few panels in the Philippines. It's a 100 meter high dam with accelerated ground, peak ground next in a 1.3 G. It could, four review experts, and we four of us uh, don't agree at, at, at anything at all. So that's how constructive the discussion and robust discussion should be. Apparent concern with this modification. As I see it, again, I give the you know, benefit of the doubt to the people who involved have proved. Trip prep pro removal appears to have compromised the overall existing safety level. Yes, it is because it's nearly breached in 1978 and if same breach comes tomorrow, it will definitely breach because the crest is nothing to something to be stability, but what we call piping, it's a desiccated cracking where water goes and no filters, it will breach the dam. Can't lay happen on the barrel, this will happen to the crest of the dam. Riprep is too steep to be stable, understand, if a wave comes in, riprep needs to be stable. If I am wrong, uh, you can, guys can. Correct me, I think most Asian uh, guide, uh, irrigation department guidelines say no filters upstream in one, one is one vertical tree horizontal. It doesn't seem to be, seems to be what some 70 degree angle. Two is trip, two is steep rip would crack the dam longitudinal because it drags the down, the crest of the dam down, so it will crack horizontally. What happens is when it rains, it gets filled with water that will itself manifests in upstream and downstream failures. There's a dam here, it has happened without crisp uh, thing, but constructed to steep. The water will go under the brick wall and pipe, which I hope water travels through the crack, the crest. That's a very serious issue. That's what I, we call sunny day failure. Removal of gravel bedding under the riprap is a bad design detail itself because uh, I read somewhere 1978 after the event one gentleman said they put one meter gravel before hand placing boulders. They knew what they were doing. So that gravel layer provides a lot of benefit to the riprap. When the wave hits, reverse hydraulic gradient, otherwise soil particles will come through the riprap. It's a maintenance, too, but ongoing it will manifest. If it dries out, desiccate the cracking, it will pipe through. Dam has no if internal defenses such as clay on filters. That's fine, kings didn't do, but they did a good job. But we now we seems to be going messing things up without studying uh, in detail. And vibration itself, 
is, as I said, these some metal stable dams. Current expo service definitely compromises the flood security. Yes, uh, as I said, the flood and wave come together. Sometimes wave comes first and then the flood. Uh, yes, it has. And drying out will cause desiccated cracking, you know, from, from the piping, very similar to Kantala in the rivers. And more importantly, now I know every internet, uh, Buddhist monks go, everybody doing newspaper articles. Normally when we undertake a work like this, there is an international law. You, when you do modification, you can't compromise the existing safety level of the dam. That means all effort should be made, taken to ensure if a flood comes now, now time in Sri Lanka was six o'clock, flood comes now, there's no repress. This is going to break. So where is the contingency plan? You don't go and bulldoze the things without a contingency plan. And even if you do reprep, you remove reprep in 100 meters carefully. So when the flood comes, you put them back very quickly. Now, uh, if anybody can say if a rain comes in the next four hours, it will be sandbag, I'll be surprised. So another thing is I read somewhere, somebody said, yeah, I don't read this, this, they get too much information. Reprep is not, I said, just dump rock. They say, oh, we are going to put the rock back. That's good. That's good in paper, but you know, it's a reprep and bidding underneath scientific based on good geotechnical and dam risk. What we call dam risk, we do a, a portfolio risk assessment and we do inventories. We do Monte Carlo simulation. We use a thing called piping toolbox. It's developed by USB and that needs a lot of input and they check the risk versus what's called effect uh, probability of failure versus loss of life. It's a universal curve where we have to stay be, uh, underneath, otherwise we are putting public at risk. If I put the numbers here, it, it will just show public at, at the brink of risk. Now the reprep was dissipating uh, energy from the wave and absorbing energy. So, you know, this, and it's a science. And proper bidding as a filter underneath. It's not putting rocks there, it has to be properly designed. And that, more, that layer will do a lot of jobs. It's not stability like a mouse sitting on an elephant. It's that the, that point, the moisture, we stop the piping happens and progress because when the soil is dry, it will erode through very quickly. You can do a pinhole test and irrigation lab, dry and wet sample, dry sample will pipe through very quickly, but not the wet one. So people know these things. Um, now, if number six, my thing, if I ask some of the overtops tomorrow, it will be an erosion very rapid. You don't have much warning time. And number seven, when the dam breaches, it would not give much warning time, I estimate. Because it's eight kilometer, you need to breach at one section, it will open up 300, 400 meters very quickly. So don't think of just putting the riprap by X plus assign accountability with criminal consequences. So there should be one owner. If it is irrigation, it's their dam. They are responsible, nobody else. If it is UDA, it is their dam. If UDA come and uh, work on the irrigation department dam, irrigation has to be responsible why they give UDA. Because that's the law. Here, uh, I was involved in uh, Hungary, about three meter high dam failed and killed three people. Straight away, they got 13 directors put in the jail or remand. I asked the colleague, they, they, still they have not been charged. They say yes, but uh, otherwise the uh, villagers will skin them, skin them alive. Because you know, they, they, that's how some people would react. Now I just put, you know, ancient dams is one I did. You know, there are technologies to see where you can see those lines where the failure mechanism is happening and if water enters, how it is going to break. Now don't repeat another Kantali. Now I have, don't Google normally for engineering, but I thought Google what happened Kantali. Because I uh, passed through Kantali with my wife about six years ago and at that time I saw guys digging up a pipeline. I rang Badramis and said, Badramis, somebody is digging your uh, dam, Chris. But I think uh, she always do the right thing. She rang straight away and said, ask him to move away. But uh, she didn't probably go after the police issues. Now, 
what is this one Mr. Jai Singh has given a good account of what happened at Kantar. Let's look at it. At the left bank sluice, the crack opened at the top of the bed, an unusual sound happened. So they all were there when it happened, near the sluice. Apparently, this is due to the previous day somebody went at the pump station with minor uh, vibration. As I said, these are metal stable stri structures. King's time done well, but it's not to just go and do um, things saying, oh, it's good, good for the community. We had to compromise safety of community jogging and keeping fit. Before keeping fit, we had to be alive. That's the main thing. And within 30 minutes, it preached. And 300 meters here, within 24 hours. Now, nearly 300 people died, and 1,600 got damaged. My estimate, it had some warning time. So if we didn't have warning time and would work by the irrigation department, at least we are talking about 200 plus people died in that one. 20 times 100. It's normally say 10 minutes, warning time will save 80% of the population who would otherwise die. Now next one, his concluding remarks, I thought I caught my eye. I hope that the Kantale Dam disaster would be first and the last major dam disaster in Sri Lanka because the irrigation department is now closely monitoring all major dams using modern technology. Now, nearly 35 years later, today, are we, are we there? I think for the irrigation department and the audience decide. So thank you very much for listening and good night to you all. Thank you very much, Nihal.